So this is a transmission electron microscope image. It's formed by um, having beams of electrons actually transmitted through a sample and you build up an image from those beams of electrons. And what it is actually is one of these, a single nanoparticle from this solution of nanoparticles. And the reason I'm showing it to you is because a couple of days ago we had um, a masterclass for high school students and the students actually made these nanoparticles. And well, both they and me got very, very excited when we could see the nanoparticles they made with quite simple chemistry. And you can see those right down to the single nanoparticle limit. We take a little droplet of this solution, we put it onto a grid, and um, we, let that, uh, we let the solvent evaporate, and then we um, put the, the, the sample into the microscope, and we can see, the, as you can see, the individual particles. It's a gold nanoparticle, it's a single gold nanoparticle. Tiny, tiny chunk of gold, in this case containing about 125,000 atoms. And we can see the uh, faces on this, we sometimes call it a chunk or a nanoparticle, but it's actually better described in this case as a nanocrystal. You can still see these ridges, these edges, and those arise because when you form these particles, they grow out to a certain size and they have um, certain certain faces. What I'm showing you you here is um, it's not quite the same crystal structure, but it, it it doesn't really matter as gold has. And you have different faces, and those faces will have different reactivities because if we if we look at different atoms on these faces, sometimes they're bonded to three atoms below. Sometimes in other cases they're bonded to two atoms below, and that leaves what are called dangling bonds sticking out. And those dangling bonds affect the reactivity, affect how the crystal grows and some faces will grow, some crystal faces will grow faster than others and we end up with these, you can see these facets on there. So this is, these are facets and, and when you grow crystals, you, grow, you can grow crystals out to very large structures. Of course if you look at diamonds you can see the facets in a diamond crystal. But this is at an unimaginably small level, this is 15 nanometers across. And yet it still has 125,000 And yet it has 125,000 atoms, yes. Um, when you work, because an atom is incredibly small, a gold atom, diameter of a gold atom is roughly a little bit less than three angstroms, so three tenths of a nanometer. So yeah, we're talking about roughly 125,000. All I've done there, I must admit, before you get your calculators out and all the experts fill up the comments sheet going, how did he manage to work that out? He's out by a factor of 2%. Um, what I've done is I've just taken the, the, the volume of an atom, I've taken the volume of the nanoparticle, divided one by the other and got a very rough estimate for the number of atoms. Maybe I should point out at this point, that I guess one of the interesting culture changes when people come, that we, we experience when people come from school, from high school, from secondary school, to university uh, to do a physics degree is that we don't care, in the vast majority of cases, we don't really care if, if we've got an answer to 19 decimal places. We, we, we make a lot of approximations. So for example, you know, if we're talking about uh, gold nanoparticles um, we're, and we want to work out the number of atoms in those, I will make a lot of approximations and I'll give you a guesstimate. And it's interesting because it seems to me that um, many of you, or many uh, first year students, undergraduates and, and uh, people who aren't scientists find that quite strange because science is always portrayed as this um, very, very exact, we really want the, 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 the values defined down to the nth decimal place and that's not really how physicists work so the, the, the common joke is that you know a cow to a physicist is basically just a large sphere. Sometimes you consider the tail, sometimes you don't. But that's, that's really, really it. So about 125,000 atoms. I've been doing some back, of, literally back, of, where's my envelope actually? Yeah, literally back of the envelope cal calculations. So we do a lot of this. We do a lot of mucking around in back of an envelopes, um, backs of envelopes. Um, you actually used the back of an envelope? I did indeed, yes, because it was the closest thing to hand. And then when you work out in terms of the volume of this compared to this, you'd get 10 to the 18, which is uh, one quintillion of these into this volume. Brady continually tells me, stop talking in terms of 10 to the 18 and 10 to the 19 and 10 to the bloody blah, it means nothing. And it absolutely doesn't mean anything. But um, it turns out that uh, if you wanted to have 10 to the 18 of these, how much volume would that take up? 
Well, again, back of the envelope calculation, it would, you'd require a 20 meter deep pile of um, Maltese, which would spread out over an area the size of Ireland. And for those of you um, on the other side of the big pond, Ireland is about the same area as the state of Indiana. As well as sort of seeing the faces, these lines are lattice planes, and they arise from the wavelength of the uh, electrons that we're using to make this image is thus that um, they uh, diffract from the crystal planes. And those diffraction, just the same way as if you take a CD, uh, well, I might have a CD, Queens of the Stone Age, <laughs> the colours that you get, so, so the rainbow colour, that comes from diffraction. That comes because the size of the, of the features on the disc that's used to encode the information are roughly the same size as the wavelength of light. Now, what you basically have here is an atomic scale DVD, or atomic scale CD, and now instead of bouncing light off it, you're bouncing electron waves. And in this case, the electron wave um, wavelength is roughly, is, is comparable to the spacing of the planes. And you end up seeing the diffraction from those planes in the, in the image. Now, I'd not, I'd seen that, as I say, in papers before. I'd never seen it in real life before, as it were, and it's, it's really neat to see.